give honor to the Spirit of Christ, and who is the head of my life, to the member of saints and friends. I thank God for being here, closed in my right mind, having the use and activity of my limbs. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and everything he done for me, my soul cry, hallelujah. <laughs> thank God for saving me. Come on, let's celebrate your man and woman of God. Apostle Alonzo and Dr. Sandra Gay. He said, he said all of that good stuff about me earlier. I said, wow, I hope I can live up to all of that. Great man of God. You guys have an awesome man of God. They hear me talk about you all the time at the River Church. And one of the things I talk about and I, because one of the biggest challenges that individuals have in this time is the challenge of being able to forgive. And we're not talking about that tonight, but I just want to make note of this, uh, that um, persons have a hard time forgiving. And in many cases, these are relationships that are so important to you that if you can just get through it, something can develop that is so awesome that God uh, had ordained, but sometimes things, the enemy plant things in your, in, your, uh, in your mind and in your thoughts to get you to abandon a relationship before it's season. Anybody ever been there before? Yes, sir. And I often tell them, doctor, remember when I, when I first met him, I said, God, I don't know why that guy, uh, I said, you should get on my nerve. Cause I know I would just say, it's good. I keep this my weapon. <laughs> I just trying to mute it, but but him and I wasn't like really really good friends when we first met. Cause Dr. EJ was his friend. That's his cousin. <laughs> He's still Dr. EJ, so but but anyway. <laughs> but but I didn't know him, so I was prejudging him before I even knew him. Because. I attempted relationship and I didn't get the response I wanted. I'm just gonna talk a little bit, then we're gonna get into a word. And because of that, then I allowed myself to be biased towards him. And thank God there's a man of God and said, y'all need to sit down and have a conversation. And we went fishing, he took me out on his boat, y'all. I don't know if he was gonna throw me overboard. <laughs> and see if I had a hiding place in Jesus. <laughs> Throw me overboard. I got Y'all know some of us come from way back there. <laughs> yeah, way back. yeah, and he, um, it was so amazing because we went out that day fishing and we got to know each other. And, and it's amazing how just spending time with people and getting to know who they are and they know who you are. And then it kind of, dismantle all of the negative thoughts you have about people. Sometimes the reason you have all of this in your mind, you never took the time to get to know people. And the first time they said something that was upset you, you just abandoned the relationship. And if you're going to be like, and you know you prayed the prayer. I want to be like Jesus. You know, you pray that prayer, Lord, make me just like you. And when he, when you He's going to make you like him. You have to go through rejection. Yes. That's right. <laughs> you have to go through criticism. You have to go through uh, being wounded yes. and abused, but still able to love, accept, and forgive. That's, That's all I'm going to say on that. That's not the message today. As I was uh, pondering today, so many thoughts when, when you have a ministry assignment, and sometimes God will speak to you, and, and sometimes we feel like we have something that probably would be better. Any of y'all have been there? Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we feel like we know, oh, this will be a good word for there. Come on. <laughs> I know ain't nobody been there but me. <laughs> we all just obey Jesus. <laughs> yeah, just whatever you say, Lord, that's what I'll do. But I found out that it's very difficult sometimes to really be a messenger of Jesus. Because he'll give you things sometimes that you don't think people want to hear, but it's really what they need. That's right, that's right. 
I was really into the word tonight already while we was worshiping. You probably just didn't know it. What he gave me because I want to read this psalm for you. And I want you to really hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us tonight. In the book of Psalms 63 and 1, it reads, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Yes, sir. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Well, look at it. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift my hands in thy name. Amazing to me because when God first started dealing with me about this, I kind of tried to run from it. Because this month's topic that we started out this month, I've been preaching all month on a topic, O oh Lord, my soul longeth for thee. All right. All right. And so I was coming here, I thought he was going to give me a new word. <laughs> but why did he have me come to Acts Ministry in September if he gave me a word for September? Mm -hmm. That's good. And he's going to give me something else to preach at Acts because I'm at Acts. If it was good enough, if it's the word of the Lord, yeah. he said, what I said to one, I said to who? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I pondered. I had something else I wanted to preach, and then he just kept bringing me right back here because he said, what has happened in the church, and sometimes the enemy, it's a scripture that says he come in unaware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost like a toxic biological weapon that he used, chemical weapon that is killing people and they don't even know why they're dying. Because in many cases, we have turned from our first love. In the, in the book of uh, Revelation, second chapter, he talked to the church of Ephesus. I'm not going there. But he said they had good qualities. They had a lot of things intact. But he said, I have one thing against you. You turn from your first love. It's easy to say you love God when everything is going well. It's easy to say I'll stay with you through it thick and thin when there is no thick. It's only thin thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's easy to say that Lord, I want to be your servant when He's just giving you cars and houses and material things. It's easy, very easy. But when you look at that psalm and you study it, and I'm not going to try to uh, give you it, uh, too much because I want us to move into a place where God wants us to be tonight. Amen. David, at this particular time when he wrote this psalm, he was having a time of devotion with God because he was challenged and the thing, he was in the wilderness in Judah, in Canaan. Ain't that a mess all by itself? You're in the place where blessings are, but look like he's blessing everybody but you. Oh, no, y'all don't have to say that. <laughs> you ain't got to say nothing. I saw you. I saw you. He looked like he's blessing everybody else. They testify, talking about how the business is thriving and how God is blessing their finances. And you're sitting in that same place, but you're in a wilderness. I know, I know, it's hard to say anything, but just sit there. <laughs> so David, and he has a, a prophecy, he has a word over his life. That he's going to rule over Judah and Israel. Well, he's in a wilderness state of mind right now. He's not feeling like God is really, he has God's backing right now. So he penned it in the wilderness. He wrote this when he was in a time. His desire towards God, his esteem of God, his satisfaction in God, his secret communion with God, mm -hmm. his joyful dependency upon God, that God would cause him to triumph over all of his enemies. 
Have you come to a place in your relationship that even though it get hard, you know that God's going to bring you out of it? Yes, sir. In due season and time, it's not going to always be like this. I can preach this because, and I'm sure a lot of you that have been saved a long time, I remember a time when I just felt like, God, you could not have called me to do this. Because if you did, why am I going through so much? I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Most people have not been there. I heard your pastor talk about all the time his seven years of brokenness. Where God put him in a season where he just put him through, allowed him to go through some things to break him. If I would do a census in here tonight and say, how many of you feel like you've been broken? God have and crushed and you're ready to meet for the master. You should probably throw up your hand. <laughs> Can't take nothing. Can't take nothing. You'll be going off all the time. And when you feel, I'm sorry. No, you're not delivered. Because you keep doing it over and over again because you don't believe that God will cause you to triumph over every situation. And I watched God take me through some things that I really, I'm serious, I was just like, I was looking for a way out. I know most of y'all think preachers that preach. See, when you tell be honest with you, sometimes we look for a way out. Yes, oh, yes, amen. <laughs> yes, Lord, how can I get out of this mess? Because it was much better yes. when I had my secular job. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I had benefits, 401K. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about if the money was going to be there, the check was coming, you know, bi-weekly. I had benefits. Some people not burning the gas I used to burn. They get the benefits I used to get. I ain't gonna look that way. <laughs> Cause y'all had brought him in while I was working. Now he have a job. He got all these benefits, and I'm over here passing this church. <laughs> oh, thank you, Gabe, for giving me that tower today. <sighs> but I did not see. I'll tell you, neighbor, sometimes you just can't see what he's really doing in your life because there's something about the crushing and the breaking. That's where he gets the new wine to come out. Yeah. See, you want new wine, but you can't get the new wine until there's a breaking and a crushing. And we won't stay there long enough to let him break you. Yeah. Every time something gets hard, I think I'm just going to leave. Yeah, I'm gone. Nobody know what I'm going through. The church really don't appreciate me. I'm up through it that I, <laughs> I ain't going to get over there. Yeah, but because there's a breaking taking place, because perfection is going to take place, and then promotion is going to take place, and you're going to walk in the blessings that God wants you to have. That's but right. he's not going to give it to you in the state of mind that you're in. Because if you have not been broken, if he tell you to go give me 5,000, <laughs> no, I'll just say, if he, yeah, if he gonna tell you to give somebody 5,000 and you have it, but your question gonna be, why did he want me to give them 5,000? Come on, let's be honest. They should go work like I did. One of the things God did, but when I was young in ministry, before I was even pastored, I was at this church. Now this is when I was in my good job let me remind y'all, making good money with benefits and bonuses, no strain, paying my bills with leftovers, had a nice bank account, praise the Lord. And they was in the church and they was in the process of raising a building fund. And God spoke to me just as clear as I'm talking to you tonight. And I wasn't even telling anyone I'm a prophet. I would not, I, I wasn't, I didn't even know nothing about no prophet and all. Well, I knew about it, but I knew I was, wasn't one. He said, I want you to give the church $2,000. I said, the devil is alive. Now, if I ain't know no other scripture, <laughs> preacher, <laughs> if I didn't know no other scripture in the Bible, I had heard my pastor say, the devil is alive enough. I said, the devil is a lie. I pay my tithes, I give my offering, I give a special offering. Why would I give the church two more, two more thousand dollars? That's the devil. I know that was the devil. Nobody could have convinced me otherwise. 
But you know, I, I, I understand now the songwriter when they say, can't you sleep at night? And I wondered why maybe God is trying to tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> Cried all night long, <laughs> didn't know what was wrong. Been there. Yes, sir. I couldn't even rest. All I kept hearing the Lord say, you need to do what I'm asking you to do. I didn't see what he was preparing me for. Yeah. Hear me. I didn't see what the preparation before. Cause can you imagine if I'm a preacher and now I'm stingy? Come on, come on. Amen. That's good. But then I want to ask you for your money. Stingy people scared to ask for money. I'm done with that. This ain't about no money, but I'm just going somewhere here. The stingy people don't won't say nothing about money. <laughs> they won't even talk about money. Yeah, they ain't going you go to talk about money, they get quiet. They'll shift on you because they don't want to talk about what they don't want to release. So finally, tell your neighbor finally, finally. he obeyed because he got tired of staying up all night struggling. I needed some sleep. I had to go to work. And then I did, I, and, and my pastor, was, they was bold. You know, if you did it, they would have wanted to post, you know, have you come. Oh, brother, da, da, da. I said, listen, I went secretly. I said, don't you do it. If you do that, you would never get another penny from me. I don't want you to say. <laughs> I gave it in secret, and God rewarded me openly. Yes, he will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This before I passed it. Watch this. I'm, the preparation for ministry. But there was a, a longing and a desire I had for God. But he did me like he did the rich young ruler. He said, oh, you love me? He said, I, you know, what is it that, you know, I love you, God. What is it that I need to do to inherit eternal life? He didn't need his money. He said, go sell all you have. It's a test yes. of your loyalty. Do you love this more than me? Amen. So I, that year, my job never had gave us like annual bonuses. That same year, they said, we established a new order, those that, come in under your uh, operational cause, whatever you come in under budget, we're going to give you 10% of it. Wow. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Bishop. Wait, why was it 10%? Mm. Uh, Maybe God was trying to tell me something, <laughs> yeah. So I end up that year getting a lump sum cash bonus. They gave, they gave that was that in cash. But this was the problem. Tell your neighbor, this was the problem. A few, a few months later, he came again. And I knew that wasn't God. <laughs> no way that could be. Why would you want me to do it? You proved me. I did it and you blessed me. Yes. So why? Mr. Abraham, why I waited all these years for a son? And now you're going to tell me to take him up and offer him for a burnt offering. Come on. I waited all these years. Woo! For this blessing. Yes. And now you're going to ask me to take it to the altar of sacrifice. Wow. So he asked me for it again. I, 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 I did at first. I said, this can't be God. God I, maybe I'm still hearing that last word. <laughs> but I said, you know what? I did the math. I gave 2000 I got, I think it was like 4600 back for a bonus. So then I took, I said, okay, I got all my money back anyway. <laughs> so this, now this 2000 is money he blessed me with. So what have I got to lose? Amen. And I blessed it with that. Now watch this, I'm, and I'm done with this. I did it the next year, I think it was 5600 cash. And then he told me to quit the job. See, when you really want God and you really desire to be what God wants, he has to break you. Yes, Lord. And many of you are still challenging your relationship with Jesus because he has not gotten rid of you yet. Jesus said the first thing, if you are going to be my disciple, you must first deny you. Now, come on, be real with it. You know you wrestle with a lot of the things of God. When, anytime there's something come to challenge you, you step in. So 
That's why some of us in our relationship with God can't go no farther because we're in that seat of authority. We're sitting right in that seat of authority. Nothing goes beyond me. I don't care how much preaching you hear. I don't care how much teaching you hear because you have not learned the simple message of self-denial. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's simple, but it's hard to implement in your life because self was the thing God dealt with the man with in the garden. Yeah. Self-will. <laughs> he gave him every tree in the garden you can freely eat. Come on, people. Everything in the garden, you can, you can go to Walmart and get everything in Walmart, but one thing I don't want you to touch, I don't want you to go to the alcohol department. No, just cheese it. <laughs> or the pharmaceuticals. Don't go to the drug department. Everything else, you can have everything else in there. But the one thing he wanted, because this was a test of man's will. Would you sacrifice your will to do his will? And that's where the big fight comes in church today. Self-will. How do you break self-will? I believe that's why your relationship with God is the key factor. Because the closer you get to him, something happens the closer you get to him, the less you will see of yourself. Yeah, yeah. I can't find me until I find him. Yes. Once I begin to know him, he tells me who I am. Yes. And so if I've lost my desire, I've lost my passion, I've lost my pursuit of him, then who's in charge? Mm -hmm. You. So this is what David, in this psalm, he was, he, was, he, was, he was saying that it was God that had the ability to sustain him. Even though the challenge was there, God had the ability to bring the resolve. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you get there, I'm telling you, you can, you can sleep at night. Yes. Yes. You can rest because you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God do, does man live. Now watch this. This is what I love about the word of God. The word of God validates itself. Yes. The Bible says before one jot or one titter of his word fell, heaven and earth will pass away. Let me bring some clarity to some of you maybe not looked at it from this point of view. If one word of the Bible failed, you wouldn't be here. Amen. That chair you sitting in wouldn't be here. This building, everything created would cease to exist in a moment. He said, because of one fair word fail, it all become non and void. Yes. That's how authentic the Bible is. It never fails. Because the moment one word fail, then everything will cease to exist. Think of it from that perspective. God's words never fail. So he was in a solitary place, desolate and afflicted, warning, wandering, and unsettled. Nobody in here feel like that. I know. You're not, you don't feel desolate. You don't feel afflicted. You don't feel like you want anything because God has surely blessed you. And you're surely not wondering and you're not unsettled. Now watch this. Being unsettled makes you a candidate for promotion. Yes, right. Being unsettled. Watch Jesus. He's in the wilderness and he's about to fulfill purpose. And he comes to a place in the wilderness <laughs> And he said, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup away from me. He was unsettled. He was in a place of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I know none of you are there yet, but you're uncertain. You're not sure about anything. And most of the time when people get there, they abandon relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's the time relationship has the ability to mature. Yes. Good. When you feel like you're unsettled, uncertain. Jesus was uncertain about his mission, but he had testified the whole time for this purpose, I came to die. But when it 
challenge this. Yes. When this got challenged, he started questioning, Lord, if it be thy will. But you done told the disciples and everybody else, I came to die. But now you're uncertain because your flesh is being persecuted. When flesh rule, the soul suffer. Yes, 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 yes. The only thing that can kill flesh is when you get in his presence. Yes. When you're in the presence of God, yes. it causes you to see him and not see you. Yes. That's why the struggle, that's why the enemy hate worship. Yes, come on. He hate good worship. Yep. He don't care if you come to church, just don't worship. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you come sit back there. You sit on the third wall. Oh, no, I'm not talking about none of y'all. <laughs> come sit wherever you want to sit. Right. But don't you dare lift your hand. Don't you worship. Don't you open your mouth. Just sit there. I just came to just listen. I just need to hear a word from God. But what is it? He wants you to respond to him. Yes. Because he's already omnipresent. Yes. When you come, whether you're here or wherever you are, when you start worshiping, and you start desiring him more than you desire other things. Anyway, let's move on. I'm going to show you something here. So, God is our God. Will be our comfort in the wilderness state. If we acknowledge God that he is, we speak of his existence in the presence of others. You don't lose your testimony because you're going through something. Amen. Now you start talking vain talk. Ah, child, I just don't know. It just ain't working for me. <laughs> it does not work for you. You work it. Anyway, that's just a little sidebar. <laughs> yeah, you know, it don't work for you. You work it. Yeah. We must own his authority. The authority he's given you, you have to own it. Yes. Stop living in a state because you don't recognize who you are. Yes. He wants uh, your relationship with him to take a priority. Yes. You are his creation. Now watch this. Why would God tell us that he created us in his own image and in his own likeness and gave us dominion and you want, he wants you to live at a state beneath what he ordained you to be. Right. Don't make no sense. No. But we have not taken what he's given us and worked it for our own good. We want to pray and ask him to do it. Thou art God, David said, and therefore I will seek thee. Therefore I will seek thee. Watch this. Now, if I told any of you and you really believed me that I buried $2 million in the back of Acts Ministry right over near the water meter, it'll be chaos in here tonight. <laughs> Nobody would want the refreshment, preacher. They, would, they wouldn't even hear the rest of the message. They would be... <laughs> They would be diligently pursuing to get to that place and dig and search and seek. He, but the Lord says, seek me and you will find me. Yes, sir. But we don't want to seek him because we want him to come where we are. But he's trying to get you to come where he is. And so when you're thirsty for him, you say, you, you, just, you just don't know. He wasn't here, but God, you just may be over here. So I'm going to go wherever I can get and make contact with you. That's good. But see, if you don't have uh, identity, uh, it's something I might share tomorrow if God allow. If you don't really know your true identity, yes, it, God. then you settle for anything. Yes, sir. Watch this. You settle for religion. Yes, Give me that old time religion. <laughs> it was good enough for my grandmother, so it's good enough for me. No, religion is, binds you up. Jesus hate religion. Yes. Religion don't get you anywhere. Being religious, it's relational. Yes. When you have this intimate relationship with him that you will, you, 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 you lay at the altar, you'll seek him, you'll, you'll, you'll travail before him because you recognize he is the answer. He's not going to bring the answer. He's the answer. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Bible says because he is, and he is what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Not that just call him one time. My Lord. Now watch this. Yes. Yes. Some of you, uh -huh. when you know people have their cell phones, and you call them and they don't answer. You just bomb that phone. You keep calling, read down, read down, read down, read down. I know they got their phone. I don't know why they ignore me. They just don't want to answer my call. They don't probably, they see it's me. That's why they don't call and they keep calling, 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 calling. Cause why? You desire to speak with them concerning something. And you are diligent in your pursuit of getting, making contact with them. Why is it with God we're so lackadaisical? That's good, that's good. Some of you want to be anointed. Some of you want to be in a place with God, but you don't want to do nothing. So I told y'all, he, he, God got to sit. I didn't, God just kind of shifted us, had me push you, and then we're going to talk about it. <laughs> ain't nobody but the wisdom of God. Because I found out that's one of the hardest things to do. And every now and then you come to church, it seems like people just in a different attitude, and it's easy to go there. But then sometime on a Friday night, Jesus, and they done drove some of them two and a half hours, or three hours, or four hours. <laughs> Sometimes it might take us four hours, four and a half, that's it. To Georgia. To Georgia. <laughs> but I told him it's only two and a half hours to Winter Haven, and he just swear that's impossible. <laughs> yeah, like two and a half hours. I'm telling you, I don't drive fast. I just keep up with the traffic. <laughs> we pass right by Popo and the whole group of us, he don't bother us. Cause we're not speeding, we're that's called traffic flow. Yeah. <laughs> that's Bishop, Pastor, that is traffic flow. You're flowing with the, now if you was out there all by yourself, he gonna give you a ticket. You flow with the traffic, it's safer. So he resolves to seek God and his favor and his grace. See, when you build a relationship with someone and you come to the conclusion that you know they love you. Now, when you're really going through something, you question God's love. Come on, tell the truth. Well, God, I don't know. You must don't love me. I must be the devil. <laughs> because you seem like you love other people more than me. But when I seek him, he starts allowing me to understand the love he has for me. And so because of his love, I know all things are going to work together for my good. It don't feel good. I don't see it right now. But I know because of the love he had for me, he did not bring me out here in this wilderness to let me die. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. If you look in the Bible, every person that he really used, they experienced wilderness. Yeah. That's true. Amen. Every person, you look at Old Testament and New, they Okay, okay, y'all like the Holy Ghost. No, both people say, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. But the Bible said when uh, in the book of a book, the Gospels, talks in Matthew and Luke, I believe it, in the fourth chapter, he says that when Jesus, John baptized Jesus in the wilderness, I mean in the Jordan, and then heaven spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear me, y'all. Hear, uh, hear ye him. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, you would have thought the, the, the spirit would have led him straight out the street ministry. <laughs> right? Yes. He just got validation from the father. Uh -huh. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yes. And the spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Come on. Mm. I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> But the first thing happened after his validation and the father's validation, the spirit took him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, to prove him and to try him and know what was in his heart. The closer you get to God, there always has to be a proving. It's easy to say, I'm ready for ministry. I'm ready to do the work of God until you've been proven. And so that's why your relationship is so vital when you have this intimacy with him where you desire him and you seek him and you're always on your face before him. One of the things the old church used to do more than we do now, we got to get back to it some kind of way. I don't know how we're going to do it. 
But they used to have all night prayer meetings. They used to, yeah. they used to yeah. do things that the church now don't know nothing about. They give, they, they, they have a little bit, they can't even be, oh, shut up, Bishop. Shut your mouth and keep on talking. <laughs> it bothers me. This is just me. This is my little conviction that I think it's 168. They hear this all the time at Rivers. It's 168 hours in a week for the life of me. And most church may take up nine. So how many of that's left, Pastor Steve? That's what, 100 and what, 59? 159, I have to just make sure my math is good here tonight. So nine hours, maybe a Sunday morning service, a Bible study night, and maybe a midweek service. So we say nine hours. So they have nine hours of time they spend with God and they have another 158 hours. Mm -hmm. And everything they have to do comes in the nine. Y'all might well say amen. amen. I know when I'm telling the truth. <laughs> it comes in at nine. 159 hours left. But somehow everything, you have appointments and everything else. I mean, I got to get my hair done. It's on Bible study night. <laughs> Look out. Good. <laughs> I'll leave that out. <laughs> you have to know when to leave it. Oh, Lord, that's enough for that. They ain't ready for that one yet. Yeah, they ain't ready for that. Because, see, deception works in many ways. You think he just wanted to deceive you for some negative thing, but sometimes he deceives you to block you from going to another place with God. Yes. What if every time y'all had service, I came up with an excuse and my wife and I wasn't there? Oh, my God, what's... Well, but why bishop don't never be the church? <laughs> You'll hold me to a standard yeah. that you don't even hold for yourself. Yeah. Wow. That's people. Yeah. And we had this conversation, I believe, sometime recently. And certain things, people, it's no big deal until it happened to them. Now, if somebody told you they were going to meet you somewhere yes. at a particular time yes. and they didn't show up, yes. oh, now you brand new. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of integrity they have to tell me they're coming and they don't even show up, come up with all these excuses. I'm closing. That first one, you know what? Yeah, you know, preacher, we got this. The first one, well, I get started here. I got to get out of here now. I done, put, I done dug this big hole now. I got to dig my way out of here. So he said, Early will I seek thee. Basically, he's saying, I will earnestly pursue you because my life is yours. I'm going to pursue you earnestly because I belong to you. It's easy when you know you've been in a place that you've not, you know, where you didn't know God and things were really bad in your life and then God brings you into this relationship. Now, it seems like there's a more genuine commitment for people who've been real bad. <laughs> people who feel like they were born with that silver spoon in their mouth. I ain't never did that much stuff. I ain't never really been that bad. I was saved since I was like three. Y'all know it's the truth. Come on. People say they've been saved since they were three. Because somebody sprinkled water on you. <laughs> I got to get out of here before I get in trouble. <laughs> David said, my whole man is affected because of this relationship with you. Yeah, he said, yeah. everything in me has been affected because of this relationship with you, God, but yet will I seek you. Yes. Paul wrote in one of his writings, he said that uh, he called to remember after when I was illuminated, when I came into the knowledge of truth. Mm -hmm. He said, I suffered a great fight of affliction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where I became a gazing star and felt so used by men. Yeah. Mm. 
felt like I became a companion with them that was so used. Let me tell you something. What God really wants to do with you is he wants people to use you up. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk for real, do you? That's the purpose of ministry. He equip you for people to use you and you be used to pull them out of their prison. Not just for us to have this wonderful relationship where we flaunt it in front of people. The gift is for you to win so. That's why evangelism in church right now is almost obsolete. You don't get people have no passion for other souls because they don't even really think that God did that much for them. Oh, no. When you are very thankful, because you think about the people that in the old time, when they got saved, they was enthusiastically stirred about ministry. And when they got saved, they would fill their car up to bring people to church because they wanted them to experience the same thing they experienced. See, when you have a real relationship with God, you want other people to experience what you've experienced. Yeah. Something wrong, something going on. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody on the phone, three o'clock in the morning, yeah, talking about, let me quit before I get in trouble. I forgot I ain't home. <laughs> Y'all get some familiar phone calls at night. <laughs> it's Jesus. <laughs> it's not Jesus. <laughs> because when there is a, okay, I'm going to give you an example. What's a nice a restaurant that everybody eat at here? Manny's. Manny's. Man, you ought to go eat at Manny's. They got the money. The food is awesome. Steak. Steak. Steaks are, I see, she said the steaks are awesome. <laughs> now, what that do for me? If I'm hungry and if I'm thirsty and I want a good steak, I remember Jackson, yeah, I know your name, Pastor Steve. <laughs> Jackson, I forgot you. Jackson told me that Manny's had a good steak. I think I'll go to Manny's. Watch this. So if you're enthusiastic about Jesus like that, yes. Yes. if you're passionate about Jesus like that, and people start telling you about their problem, and one of the things we do a lot of times, we don't evangelize right. Well, you know, you come to Jesus, he'll fix all your problems. No, don't tell nobody he's going to fix all their problems. That's deception. Because now when they come in, all they're looking for him to fix their problems. Yes, yes. You ought to go, that's your opportunity to share your testimony. Yes. I've been where you are. Yes. You know what? I thought I needed, it wasn't the bills. It wasn't uh, all the problems in my life, but I had poor management skills. I, I didn't have no discipline in my life. And so God brought discipline. He brought structure. He brought order in my life. And what you need, you need a relationship with God so he can bring some structure and some order in your life. And then you can fix your own problem. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about Jesus going to fix it. He's not coming back down from above. Isn't that what it said in the book of Romans? He said, did Christ not coming down again from above? That's why he said that he sent preachers to help give you ministry, people to share with you good news. Yes. Isn't that good news? That's why gospel is supposed to be good news. Yes. Jesus saves. He delivers. Yes. But somehow, because the passion has died. You know, I'm closing about the fourth time. You know, all of you in here have fell in love. Mm. <sighs> love was just in the air, right? <laughs> you was in love. And when you was in love, there was no limits what you would do for the one you love. Come on. Yeah, I, I tell them at Rivers, it's not here. I know y'all don't do this in Winter Haven. But if you was in love, you loved them so much that you spent stuff supposed to be for the baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't work nowhere. You had two jobs. I understand. And then if anybody said anything about it, you cut them off. Yes. 
Because of love. I know he, he told me, he, I'll just give him a chance to work it out. And vice versa. There's times when men have married women. Same thing. But you loved them so much, they put you through hard times. And you stayed right there because of love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That he gave himself for a sacrifice in your stead. What man of love is this? <laughs> that a man would lay down his life for his friend. He call us friend. Yes. Yes. Who are you willing to lay down your life for? You got this relationship with Jesus. Are you willing to lay down your life so somebody else could be saved? Are you so full of you? That everything's about me in this relationship with Jesus. I don't realize the fact that he saved me so I can reach back and pull somebody else yeah. along. Yeah. See, if we really get this, there'll always be full seats in that. Yeah. Because you'll be passionate about winning others to Christ. The reason church is the way it is now, the church has lost her first love. We've turned from our first love. We only want the benefits of being in a relationship with Jesus. We only want the benefits. And so now here we are at this stage in Christianity. Are you satisfied or do you want to see change? He said in this day, it shall be greater works. What happened? The devil creeped in unaware. Got us so focused on the blessings that we lost focus of the person. He said, return unto me and I'll return unto you. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves, see, all the scriptures go together. Yeah, yeah. And pray and seek your, my face and turn from your wicked ways. He said, I'll heal the land. The land is in the condition it is because the church have turned from a first love. Yeah. We just want stuff from God and not him. I'm like this. If my wife just wanted me for what I could give her. I have issues with that. Think about it. If, you, if somebody wanted you just because what they can get from you, you would have issues with it. Yeah. What kind of relationship would that be? The only thing I come to you for is what I want. But when you develop a true relationship that you love the person, you don't come because of what you want. You become because of who they are. The person of Christ. Shama. God gave, that's what he gave us a word the first of the year. He said, the year to apprehend. And, and initially, everybody would think about the stuff they want to get. When I released the word, God said, this will be a year to apprehend. But then the banner showed where the person was running towards the cross. Because that's who Paul said. Paul said, I want, he said, Paul said, not as though I had apprehended, neither am I perfect, but I sought after that I may apprehend that for which I'm apprehend. I want to apprehend that for what the, the person, that for which I was apprehend. He apprehended me. Now I need to apprehend him so we can have intimacy. Yes. Shama. Yes. Yeah. So he wants us to learn the person of Christ. To the point that it create passion and desire for more of him. That when you sing a song, I want more of you, it's not just a song. Yes, yes. Tears run down your face and you begin to weep because there's a passionate desire that I need you, God. I yeah, want you. Yeah, yeah. I remember when the old people used to say, I need the old. Every moment, every hour, people just cry and weep before God because they were so desperate and they were so determined that they was going to touch him. Because I know if I touch just like the woman with the issue, just the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Making contact with God is everything. Yeah. 
And why you still crying? Because you, you was negligent to seek him while he may be found and not give up because maybe you seek him the first time and you felt like you came up with no answer. God want intimacy. Shabbat. God want a people that are crying out until he show up. Yes. Jacob mentality. Not going to let you go till you bless me. I'm going to build an altar right here. I'm going to come to this church every day. See, this thing real to me. I'm going to tell you why. Because I, I see where in some, I see where uh, in some cases I kind of let something slip that I had. When I first got saved, I had a group of men. We met every single day. And we cried out to God. We were new believers. And we did that daily. And those guys that was in that group, they still saved. You know why? They built relationship. They didn't just come to church. They went a little farther, Shabbat. They didn't just stop at what coming into this sanctuary, but I seek it when I'm home. I, see, I, I have quiet time that I've set aside that I seek. It. See, this is real to me. I do this. I'm not preaching that he know. I got time every day because since God took me on my job, he told me, he said, I want you to go to the church. I know preachers that's full-time ministry. They just go out and have a good time. But he had me come there every day and I spend that quality time with him because I need to know him. Yeah. I need him to show up on my behalf. I can't do this without him. Amen. And then he started, he said, the secret, ah. he said, the secret of the Lord is with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Yes. And he'll do what? Show him, them his covenant. Yes. God has secrets. That he don't show to everybody. You don't show everybody your secrets. Yes. You only show people secrets yes. and share secrets with them you can trust. Yes. When he trusts you, he'll show you secrets. Everybody don't see what you see. Or it's in the Bible. He said, many men desire to see what you see and have That's not right. saw it. That's right. And to know what you know and have not known it. Because they seek them early. Shama. He said, you seek him, you'll find him. Yes. You yes. knock. And the door will be open. Ah, you my door. I feel you, God. Yeah, because see, God just want a passionate people now. He wants somebody that's not that little dab won't do you. I thank God for people that are so passionate that they'll cry out to God all night. They don't, they don't cry for a little while, then cut it off. You have to just cut off the service. Because yeah. they ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Because they need more of him. Yes. Because the more and less of me. Yes. More of him and less of me. Whatever you do in this next season, learn how to be intentional about worship. Amen. Intentional about praising and seeking God. Intentional about travailing before God. I don't care. I, I, I can't say it like that. But, uh, but, but don't matter what you're going through. See, sometimes you come in church with the weight of the world on your shoulder. And the day you really ought to worship, you come in there and somebody feel sorry for you. And you sit down and worship going on and you just cry. And you want somebody to come over and prophesy. You ain't going to never get a prophecy out of me like that. Because you want pity. Yeah. But let me give you truth. David said this in one of the writings. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed. <laughs> I lead to the rock. Come on, be outside. That's higher than I. He said, I'm going where you are. Shut up. When I'm broken, when I can't get help nowhere else, I'm coming where you are, God. Ah, yeah, Bob. I'm coming where you are. When I can't find help anywhere else, you are my helper. You are my defense. You are my shield. You are my buckler. You are my God. Yeah, yeah. Early will I seek you, God. Early. See, see. Tell you, it's real, people. Amen. It's real. But you got to change your perspective. Yes. Yes. Change your, your whole mindset about church. Yes. Don't come in church full of you. Come on. Come on. You, you, you feel it all pitiful about yourself. The psalmist said, if I was hungry, you wouldn't know it. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't let it be where people, you come in church, everybody know you're going through. 
When you come in church, when you're going through hell, that's the day you ought to come in with your hands lifted, to your mouth filled with praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord has been my help. I'm going to cry to him. I'm not coming in here looking for you. can't help me no way. Shoot, you came in. I'm looking, you came. I'm looking at you. You can't even help yourself. You look like you pathetic yourself. You, I uh, got uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to clean my mouth up from that. I don't want to offend nobody. But how am I going, you going to help me when you're in a bad state yourself? So I don't need to be coming in here looking for pity for you. I might as well seek the Lord. I might as well call upon the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run therein and they're safe, right? They don't crawl. They don't come in. They run. They run because they need God right then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they run. What it is, they, get, they make haste to go after God. Yes, sir. We lost that passion. We lost that passion because we lost the love. Yeah, we don't love him like we should. Because if you love him like that, you, you go after him. You're not worried about building an identity for you. You don't care. You're not concerned about what anybody's doing sitting next to you. Matter of fact, you might warn them. Listen, I'm desperate today, so you might want to get somewhere else. Because I don't know what's going to happen, but all I know before I leave here today... I'm getting up out of depression. I'm getting up out of weariness. I'm getting up out of frustration. When I leave here today, I'm going to leave here glad with God countenance. I'm going to leave here looking like God, feeling like God, walking in the authority of God. I'm not leaving like I came in. I'm not leaving like I came in. Who am I talking to in here? I'm on though. No. You're not leaving like you came in. You didn't come to another meeting, broadcasting it all over Facebook and everywhere else just to come in here and act religious. You come, some of you drove three hours, two, three and a half hours just to come here and look like that. What's wrong with you? You, I'm about to, you might as well stay at home and say, and kept your gas money because you ain't going to get nothing from God unless you have a desperation. You got to be desperate for him. You got to want him like you never wanted him before and you ain't come here just to entertain a church sir. Do I have a people here tonight that's desperate? Do I have a people here tonight that made up in your mind I did not leave my house, my place of comfort to come in here. I'm not going to coach you. I'm not going to try to pull you. I'm not going to wear myself out. But if you won't go, this word was for you. And it's what you do with the word that's going to give rather you yield results. When, let me tell you something. When you're in your worst state, that's when you ought to give God your most intense worship. Because you know he's able. My, uh, our bishop told us that. Then Dr. Candace Tracy gave us a word before we left. He said... I want y'all to remember these three words. God is able. No matter what you're going through, God is able. One, two, three. God is able. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. <laughs> three days and resurrection came. God is able. Now, when you develop your relationship with God, that becomes reality to you. God is able. And then he gave us a fork. Remember he gave us a, my fork in my bag now. My, mine in my bag right over there. My fork travel with me. Because he told us to keep the fork. Some of y'all rejoiced about that word for a day. Probably don't even know where your fork at now. Oh, it's in my bag. Y'all want me to prove it? It's in that bag right now, my fork. Same fork he gave me. Yeah, because what, he, what, what I begin to see, he said, when there, you, they tell you in a restaurant to keep the fork, that's because something else is coming. The meal is not complete yet. It's not done yet. They said, keep the fork, keep the fork. 
because something else is coming. Oh, glory to God. See, the attitude of expectancy is a breeding ground for miracles. 